find out if I'm a real fighter or not, because I am returning to boxing after two years since I fought the Gold Floyd Mayweather to fight Conor McGregor's dick, <laughs> the king of... Stupid. I, I, I don't know, the fucking stupid nicknames are so dumb, aren't they? <laughs> The Dylan Donuts one, I don't understand. And then oh, the, oh, they call like me a the diabetic counter Dracula, I didn't get that either. Maybe you like calling you fat. Is that what that means? Oh, that's what I would have said. Like, it sounds like a kindergarten. Yeah, right? and you're not even fat. I know, right? <laughs> <You're not laughs> uh, I back up everything I say. Okay, let's fight right here. And if you want to talk shit, let's talk shit. There's a lot of athletes out there, but there's not a lot of fighters. Logan Paul be dead without Dylan Donuts. You know about this story. <laughs> Holy too. shit. Excited. You're excited, right. huh? What is uh what does training look like? Anything specific? No, I feel good, bro. Yeah. I feel like for him, there's I don't have to be anything that different. I don't think he's that good. I think he's a fluffed up steroid, you know, juice head. I think that they think being a fighter is different than what it is. I don't think he has the heart to be a fighter, so I think it's gonna be easy. I competed against the best of my life, you know. I mean best people my whole life so i think that he's just not he's just not cut for this you know well there's so much i want to get into because yeah people forget yeah. because of the shit you talk and like this persona you have online yeah. that you do have accolades of being one of the best in the world yeah. at your martial art what do you think the difference is as far as your training is your mindset different than when it once was training jiu-jitsu than it is now i think you I mean after training 15 years you get it's just the body's different you're getting older but the mindset is still there you know yeah. i mean i I'm very competitive. I'm competitive in every, every every aspect of my life, so it's very easy for me. Like I just I don't lose. You know. That, yeah, and I listen man, to to give you credit where it is due, yeah. and I think I know you a little bit differently than other people. Yeah. That you don't lose that. Like you you have a competitive drive where like you can hop on a jujitsu mat right now. Yeah, exactly. And you want to win. Doesn't yeah. matter who you're going against. Yeah, I hate losing. I hate losing anything. Like it doesn't matter what it is. And that was the funny thing when we met. Cause you're known for drinking. I was like, I had to out drink you. <laughs> this dude, this dude, literally. I guess we're gonna hop right into the, how we met. The first day that we met, Dylan had a vengeance out to like a vendetta to make sure that he drank more than me, and he won for sure. This was like one, one of the worst. I won by fucking hospitalization. This is the worst night of my worst night of my life, and I guess I can tell the camera. So, yeah, we uh, one night just met this kid. He's like, come to this bar. I was yeah. like. All right, I guess he wants to hang out. Super cool dude, and I will say you were way cooler than I thought you were going to be in person. Everybody says that, though. What do you think I was going to be like? Yo, fuck you, man. What yeah, bro. Well, listen, again, the persona you have online yeah, is a lot yeah, different yeah. than the dude you are in person, which is a good thing. I think, I but I think similar, uh, I'm like similar as in like the banter and the fucking around, but some people, even when I come to the gym, like you're a lot different than I thought. I'm like, yo, you want me to be like, yo, fuck you, bitch. Like, what's fucking spar? Like, <laughs> some dudes are dickheads. Like, you're, you're not, you're not a, yeah. a mean guy in person. So, anyway. I'm a martial artist at the heart, you know, like, at the end of the day, so I have those core values, but just because I like to promote a fight and just be who I am, doesn't mean I'm a dickhead, you know? Right. And and at the end of the day, the guy's talking about fucking killing me in front of my mom, and he's saying he's going to knock me out fucking dead, so I can't say some shit back, you know? Well, let's talk about that, because we can get into a lot of things, but we just watched his promo video yeah. of talking shit, shit about you. How, how do you feel? I think... I mean, for this fight too, it's like it's about the promotion, it's about the money. I'm not taking this fight for for legacy. Right. Like, I'm not taking this where I'm on my deathbed. I'm not telling my kid I beat Logan Paul. Like, who the <laughs> fuck cares? Right. I tell him about how I fucking versus Leandro Lowe and all those guys, and you know, winning world championships. So this is for promotion. This is a show, and he's terrible at it. And I thought that he would be better than the most, but like calling me these stupid like five year old names is. What do you call you, Duck Danis, right? Or Dylan Donuts? Dylan the fuck Donuts. That's so cheesy, yeah. like you know, I think like. He's Fucking terrible! Like, you know, you know, you know I'm roasting him online, like you know, going hard on him, and this is what he comes back with, like with Photoshop pictures, and it's just so cheesy. Like, I thought he would be better at this. I actually give, I, I gave him more credit than he. I think I thought, yeah, he would come with. I thought this fight would come with more. You know, it's interesting too. Like, he is now. He's one of the biggest WWE superstars. Yeah. You would think he knew and would really push pace on. And you know he has those writers on his side. Right. Like he would be using them and he, they're on his payroll. So he should be coming up with some good stuff. I said this the other day, like if he was in the Attitude Era, they'd be like giving him swirlies in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, like man. he can't handle it. Like even now if I'm going at him or anything, it's like he has, he's so egotistical that he can't control the narrative that he's used to controlling huh. that is driving him fucking insane. Do you think you've gone too far with no. anything you've done? It's mental warfare. You could beat a man in three ways, you know, physically. Like I was saying you could beat a man three ways, so like physically, mentally, and spiritually, you know, and that's that's the art of war, you know, Sanzu. And uh, this guy reads books. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very well versed in the game, so 
I think I've already broke him mentally, and I could tell that he is going to be emotional in there. Just like when Roberto Duran, you know, fought Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard used to be on the outside and be a outside fighter and pick everybody apart. And Roberto Duran, like, antagonized him so much, he became like a brawler, and he, he lost. So I think, Logan, I'm in his head. I think I'm just chilling in there, you know? Dude, that's a really, really good point. I said that I was, I was eating Japanese sushi in his head. That was funny. Listen, and he man, was I, eating, ro- he eats roast beef every night for dinner. I tell you, <laughs> I, I tell you straight up how I feel sometimes. And I've been honest with like, I'm listen, man, that's crazy. You said that. But when you said that, that was funny. With the uh, roast beef for the, dinner. Yeah, yeah, that, that was hilarious. <laughs> but like, you're so right in that. I got to imagine somebody in his camp. This is what saying, I'm saying though. He's not a fighter. Right. Like he's, a, he, he's not a fighter. He, I mean, I get the WWE, he's athletic and all this, but. You know, put those guys in the ring like Roman Reigns or something. You know, I toss them on their head. Yeah. So he thinks like, oh, he's like bragging he's an athlete and all this. There's a lot of athletes out there, but there's not a lot of fighters. It's a good point. It's a different breed, you know. You got to expect there's somebody in his camp that's telling him that though. Like, listen, Dylan is. This is what he does. He's yeah. gonna talk shit in ways that you never thought. But you the thing is, is that he signed you. up for this. He knows who right. I am. He know how long has he known me? Like so, like he knew what he signed himself up for, and then now he's trying to backtrack because it's too hard or it's. Fuck him, bro. Do you, th- like, do you think he's getting psyched out? 100%. Oh, yeah. I know he is. Like, I, I know he is. How do you know that? He's shown me his weakness. I can't go in, because I told you, I can't talk about it too much behind the scenes stuff, but yeah. he's going crazy. Really? Yeah, but now I think his back is up against the wall because the people are on my side. Like, you talked all this shit, and now you can't take it back? Listen, Get the we, fuck out of here. We've you know? seen the transition. I've seen when people are all against you. I'm like the I, anti-hero. I'm like yeah, Tony dude. Soprano now, you know? I'll read, <laughs> <laughs> I'll read your comment section, and it's now like yeah. rare Dylan W. Or, but like, it's this yeah. whole time, I've, I only just spoke the truth. Like, you know, like and like people get mad at me. I guess because I haven't fought and I understand that and I get what people are coming from because like that like I don't want to fight that you know I had some really bad issues with my knee and like some of the stuff in my life I don't talk about but you know I, I always just spoke the truth I think now it's just starting to come out because I'm fighting people are starting to get behind me more and I'm starting to they're starting to maybe I get a bigger audience because Logan obviously is a big name and it's harder in Bellator to talk sh- shit or truth about people when you really like like who the fuck are these guys right, right, right. it's like hard to him and know who the fuck I yeah. don't know anything about some guy from like South Dakota that I'm fighting and I'm amazed that's like you know so well this that, is definitely easier th- yeah I'm, I'm sure this is nothing even compared to like actually training for a fight yeah but I definitely want to get into those things but I do enjoy said. this a little bit more because like even in Bellator when I fight these guys like you're fighting a guy that you know like you know there's no build up I, like this is this is like prize fighting you know part of prize fighting is Entertainment. It's fun. It's fun. Like you know, like it's 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 the whole build up. It's everything. It's the whole show. Yeah. You know, and that's where a lot of fighters lose, and that's why they don't. They make it one two fights in the UFC. They're gone. You forget about them in a month. So I haven't fought in four years, and I'm more talked about every and then every UFC fighter. Yeah. And everybody admits it, and they and it drives them fucking crazy. Listen, bro. For better or for worse, you definitely are talked about, and I yeah. think people undervalue like how hard that is to handle like, it is you put yourself out there yeah. you've said some things that are very controversial yeah, you've had literally i would say like 95 percent of a comment section against you yeah. and i would say you handle it pretty well like i know things and then you, you see the person people fucking try to fight me people scream at me people do this so like and yeah. then people get mad when i snap back sometimes but oh i gotta tell i so we were at a bar the other night and you gotta go out with dylan once in a while it is a lot of fun people <laughs> people can talk what they want to talk on yeah. uh, social media they see him in person and they do geek out. Except for this one guy, we're walking out of the bar and from like, I would say 30 feet away, this dude's like, hey yo, fuck you Dylan Danis. And <laughs> Dylan whips his head around. I whip my head around and this kid was like a deer in headlights. Like, And then yeah. he's like, uh, yeah, bitch. And Dylan goes like this to his face and he's like, say something else. And the kid like was so shook. We walked away because it was like just not. He's like, I have a drink. I would have tossed it on him, dude. I would, well, like, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, the old Dylan. I went done through something. my phase though when I was drinking heavy, and I was on, the, and I was after my surgery, and I was just smacking people. Yeah, like I would just smack them. I hit the dude with my crutch. I was just, I was, I was a menace for a little bit, and I definitely was not a good stage in my life. But I just used to just be like, oh, yeah, because like some people think it's sweet when you could just say stuff. And uh, I back up everything I say. Okay, let's fight right here. And if you want to talk shit, let's talk shit. Yeah. And that's the thing that's kind of weird with this like influencer boxing shit because. These guys are talking like out of their ass, but then when I come up, like I can defend it in a real fight. Yeah. It's like what uh, Nate was saying to Jake: like you can't be talking about Connor's girl because if you two were on the street, Connor would strangle you dead or knock you unconscious. Like you can't be talking like that. And I'll, I'll stand for everything I've said against anybody. Yeah. You know, and 
I take in my I take in my fair share of fights and like six on ones, two you know, anything. I don't run away like Jay did. When Jay was confronted with everything he said, he ran like a fucking pussy. Yeah. Like imagine that if that was me, I probably would never be able to be able to show my face if I got confronted by twenty guys and I started running away. Yeah. Like, you know what? I, there's a story from John Gotti. He told his son one time, you know, he got into a fight and there was a bunch of guys that came and he ran away. And he, he came and he sat him down and he says, no matter what, you never run away. You sit there and you, either you take your beating or you don't, but you never run away from a fight. Like, yeah. you know, so that's the way you got to do it. If you talk to shit, you got you to back it up. You know? Yeah. You, and you've never ran away from like, even your, the losses you have taken, you've never, yeah. you've admitted it and you've owned up to them. I think that's the whole thing. It's like, you know. It's the journey. Yeah. And that's the fun part about it. You know, you gotta, you gotta enjoy the journey. The wins and losses are, it's part of the fight game, you right. know, it's just like in anything, the brawn has lost how many, how many times, but yeah. you know, you, and keep you give going. credit, like you give, you give credit to like the jujitsu guys that have beaten you. Yeah, exactly. Or the ones of course, that are good. Yeah, of course, you know? yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you uh, talk, you talk and give a lot of respect to people that I think, because I think I have, I, these guys don't have the martial art background that I have, you know? Yeah. I think they don't have the same morals, you know? And I, I was saying this on the, the full sign podcast, but you could tell someone if they're martial artists. If you ask, like, they were asking me who wins, like, Mir Khan or something like that. Like, a real martial artist doesn't talk about training. Right. You know, like, I still have those, like, those, those those morals and those, like, the respect of martial arts. And I think that these fake fighters, or they're not, I can't call them fighters, whatever the fuck they are, don't have that. And mm -hmm. I think that they have a blurred, I don't know, whatever it is. They're yeah. just delusional. There's a blurred mind and, like, a, yeah. And, a false and, and the scene will die. Like, and the thing is, I never wanted, I would never take one of these fights if it wasn't KSI. I didn't mean, KSI was not even ever on my radar. That just happened. Me and Logan were going to fight. You know, he blew his knee out. Yeah. And then that kind of came about. But I was either Logan or, or Jake because of our past and what they've done to me. And they have fought real fighters and they take it more real, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but I would never fight anybody. Like, I mean, I would never box anybody else. I don't really care about these influences or anything right. like that. Like, this is stupid. I'd rather fight in a real fight where you can, you know, and there's no rules. Like, if me and you got into a street fight right now and I was like, hey, only hands or like, only potty shots. What the fuck is that? Yeah. yeah. And it's a real fight, you know? And he better be praying to God that I don't grab his neck and just put him unconscious. I don't give a fucking shit, so... Don't, don't, give, don't yeah. give away your secrets here. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, mean, I want to... He has no choice. <laughs> right. They're not going to be able to pull me up by the time I put him unconscious. Uh, untrained neck, you out in like three, four seconds. Maybe less, uh, less than that, so... I've been... I've been... Yeah. choked by you so I would say yeah probably and, and that's it you train you've yeah. been training how long since you were 15 yeah something like that exactly yeah. and think about all these guys that talk shit about me and this little stupid shit like they don't train they don't realize what I would do to you them. can show for the first time and it's scary I probably would like handcuff them put them behind their back it, it would be tough it yeah, would be tough so. to watch uh, but let's 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 definitely take a step back and yeah. you do have extremely high level experience in jujitsu. so when uh -huh. did you start let's let talk us through the entire jiu-jitsu journey for you when I start like yeah. how, how I got started I got into a uh, like a a fight in school. I was I was a street fight, but there was this kid that was in my class that would always like talk because I I was, a, yeah I was like you know not not a quiet kid, but yeah I was kind of a quiet kid. I wouldn't say I got bullied, but I definitely was just yeah. more of a quiet kid when I was growing up. And some kid used to always mess with me, mess with me, and it was like yeah, it was fight one day, and uh, back in the day like there used to be like a I don't know like a field down low when we went, and a, a circle of kids came around us. It was like half a movie with like the old blackberries and stuff, and me and him fought. <laughs> And the first time I, I, th I just like, just from just wrestling around, like my best friend was a wrestler at the time. We just, you know, playing around as kids. I like threw him and I choked him. And everybody's like, oh, you got to restart this. I was like, what the fuck? I beat him. Yeah. And they're like, no, that doesn't count. You got to knock him out. I was like, this is fucking bullshit. I beat the kid. <laughs> so like they made us restart the fight. And, you know? and I was like, all right, fuck. So then this time I took him down. I started, And at the time, I didn't really know fighting too much. I was punching him in the back of the head. And my fucking hands were just blowing up. Like, because like, it, it's like hard to like, yeah. when you're punching, like, the, like, you know, especially the temple or the back of the head. And then I rear naked choked him. And I was like, I'm going home. So like the fucking like older kids took my book bag and they like, threw it in the mud and they like fucking like took all my shit. They're like, that's not real fighting this shit. And so then I went home and then back then MySpace was like a big thing. And I was getting messages because the kid was popular. Like, oh, we're going to jump you, this and that. And like, they were like always threatening me. And back in the day when I used to have to go with the bus, there was like uh, a good amount of like I would say feet or I don't know how to explain it distance and they yeah. used to try to get me and you know so like I had to like get to the bus somehow so I couldn't get jumped and I had to like basically I, it was me and my friend we started watching UFC and I was like I need to start training because I need to protect myself because yeah. I can't be I'm not going to get jumped or I'm not going to get beat up and we, I think it was a George St. Pierre fight and I saw he was taking everybody down at the time and I was like I want to do that and it happened to be a magazine back in the day and I saw there was a gym by my house and I just I went to go train and I never stopped what was yeah. the gym called? AMA Fight Club. Yeah. But 
Yeah, that's the where I started. That's where you started? Yeah, I started with Jamie Cruz. Yeah. Wow. And the first day I got like, I couldn't do one push up. He could tell, he tells the story. I was just like, I wasn't like the craziest athlete. I just never stopped. And I was so competitive that like getting beat up just, I, I had to keep coming back. I, I was so competitive, dude. You have no idea. Like I used to go home and cry when I would get tapped. Really? Yeah, like I couldn't take it. I had to fucking come back. I had to get better. And then you started getting like the guys that were like the older guys. And then when I started getting better, like, I wish we could have, one day we'll have Helwig on. He could tell you the story because he was older at the time. But they used to, like, like, well, like the fighters of, like, I, when I was really good, if they would get something on me, they would hurt me. They would, like, yeah, yeah. and they were in the UFC. They would, like, hold the arm bar and hurt my arm where they would choke me unconscious because they were so mad I was getting so good so fast. And then, like, one day I just came in and I was just fucking everybody up. And really? Yeah. They, Helwig has the stories, but, like, yeah, they used to just, like, kind of try to break me. But it made me who I am now, you know? That's why I think I'm so competitive. I used to, like, I I, I hate losing, yeah. So. so this came from out of, like, almost, like, what do they call it, the villain arc? Like, this is this was his story. Oh, well, like, it, it's he, funny because, like, I, yeah, I, yeah, I just, I would say I wanted just to defend myself, you know? I don't right. know. I didn't want to get, I didn't want to get jumped. And it was funny, I joined the wrestling team, and one of the kids that wanted to always jump me wrestled for, like, a couple of days, and he quit. But, like, I got to wrestle with them, and I, like, <laughs> ragged all them. I was like, man, it's just crazy how life works, you know? Did you feel the momentum shift from like I would assume like you said you wrestled and you trained so hard out of fear yeah. versus now training out of I guess like just accomplishing goals that you had like did you feel that momentum shift or it was just always out of fear sometimes I think about my life like I said like at nighttime sometimes like because like maybe I'm getting older but I'll sit in bed and I think about like what my life would be without jujitsu and how much it's done for me and but then it's like I don't know if I would like to think like that like because like I'm still on the journey maybe one day when I'm done with this I'll think back like that but it's just crazy. Like, I don't know what I would be doing because I, I, I was really bad in school. I used to sleep all day. I, I don't think I did homework. I, I, I never did one piece of homework in, in high school. Really? I used, to get, I used to get in a lot of trouble. I was at the class, like, class, I would say class clown. I used to fucking make, you know, like, stupid jokes in high school and shit and get in trouble and do stupid shit, throw shit. But in middle school, I had the most write-ups out of anybody in the whole school. Um, but, yeah, like, it's just crazy. I was never good at anything. And like I was good at wrestling and I used to get in trouble a lot and I would go into the principal's office and he he was a wrestler back in the day and he used to be like, Yo, like if you went tonight, I'll get rid of the detentions <laughs> and shit. So it was it was pretty cool actually. Yeah. Yeah, everything you're saying makes sense. I'm yeah. not, I, I I'd be lying if I said, Whoa, what, you didn't do homework? That's yeah, yeah. that's crazy. I just fuck you know what's crazy? I used to have a folder and I used to have printed out moves of like NC because back then that's how you would find stuff. I don't think YouTube was too crazy, but or maybe it was. I used to have Eddie Bravo's moves in like sections. So I would just look at that on a folder. Really? Yeah, and study. And then I, when I got out of school, I would just go straight to Jiu Jitsu. You know, it's like that's th so it's funny. Yeah. You saying that reminds me when we had Bo on. Like yeah. th just two high level guys, great at what they do. Yeah. And I think the difference is that Bo's smart though. I think he went to college and Bo's stuff. Like. Bo's very smart, but yeah. Bo had an obsession, like a sick obsession yeah. with being the best. And all he cared about was wrestling. So, like, he would do that. Like, right. he would go from, like, real young watching highlight tapes of other wrestlers. And yeah. you're the same way watching I think Eddie Bravo. passion, obsession. Uh, the, it's just a scene from The Matrix that I always bring up. And it's like when she says, you're not the one, you know, he doesn't understand why he's not the one. Right. It's because he doesn't believe he is. You know, and that's my biggest thing is if you don't believe it, like, down to your, like, fucking ball sack, then you're not, you're never going to be the one, you know? Yeah. I try to tell that to, like, even my brother or, or my friends, like, you have to just know and you have to believe it. And like, it doesn't matter what anybody says, you know, and like, that's, that's how it, you become the best. Yeah. But listen, man, you saying that shows that you're different and yeah. you may not realize you're different because you just think that everybody feels the same way you do. Yeah. That passion you have is a level of passion that most human beings don't understand. Yeah. Right. No, like just the average person walking around saying, I want to be the best jujitsu artist in the world. Yeah, you see them though. They could go for, a, you see it all the time. People have to go for train for months six months it's different year they quit exactly you know and i've seen that my whole life i've been in the gym my whole life so i seen the kids that come in they're really talented and then it's okay i was go party with girls and do this shit yeah and i, I went through a bad phase where because in high school i didn't party i didn't do anything really? i didn't drink i didn't start drinking until i was like 23 and i just used to train all day and mm -hmm. then i started getting more popular and i i lost myself for a little bit where because then everything started coming at me really fast and you know, I had a couple of years where I, I fell back into that work because maybe it would have been better if I partied and drink when I was younger because I just didn't never had that because I was never like the guy that got girls and did all this. Cause I was just a like nerdy jujitsu jiu guy, you know? Right. Like, back then, no one even was like, what the fuck are you doing? You're really training? Like you're like kids in high school don't understand. Well, like, let's talk. So that's it's very interesting you're saying this because yeah. that's where I wanted this to go. Talk us through like old Dylan Danis. What did your training look like on a day-to-day -day basis? So before I went to Marcel's, it would be 
go sleep through school still or just look at stuff yeah. and then go to train and i would take every single jiu-jitsu class they had like literally i would go to the gym at four do the four to five five to six six to seven and i wouldn't stay all day really and then like uh, back then i didn't drive so either my sister would drive me or my mom or my grandma or guys i actually had a really close friend at the gym that would uh he was a really cool guy actually he passed away so but he uh he used to drive me and bring me back home and he was really like like big part of my career a lot of the guys there were some good guys in, in my life but uh mm-hmm. he ended up committing suicide like recently as so i was thinking about oh, it shit. but yeah he was a really good guy and he used to drive me to practice and always train with me and always like hype me up and you know there were certain people that like had my back and always gassed me up and uh, i appreciate that but like yeah so i would just train all day like that and then at one point i got really good and then i would go to the so what i would do was i would go to school and then i would go on the train from the house i would watch at a train station go to Manhattan early and the training for Marcel's was like six to seven. So I would have to wait in the city. I would sit at like a Panera bread, go just like get food or maybe just stay on my phone, wait, train. And then I would have to go get the train at nighttime by myself at like nine, 10 o'clock, come back on the train. And then I would get home at like one o'clock, go back to school. And I would do that every day. Yeah. So you, that's I'm, how I met Munch because I, I used to go train on Marcel's and he was training on Marcel's. I was younger. I was in high school. So you leave high school, go right to the city. Yeah, so I would take the there. train. So I think I would get out of school at like 2.30, and then I'd make the train at like 3.30. And I used to just be in the city up by myself and just go train on Marcel's every day. That's in. Th- and yeah. did you ever feel like you had to force yourself to do it? Or you wanted to do it? Like I mean, training- it definitely sucks. I mean, just doing the traveling. But, I mean, I I, I love training with better guys. It was just like it was just like a, a adrenaline rush. Because, like, when I got really good at a certain, a certain point, and you train jiu-jitsu, so some people that train don't understand this, but... It's more people just staying away from you, not wanting to get tapped. And that wasn't fun for me. Yeah. And then when I started to go against better people where it was like more like, you know, like just higher level and good roles. And that's fun because it's not fun when you go with someone. They don't want to roll with you and they're just trying to stay away and do that yeah, stupid yeah. shit. It was a bunch of older guys that didn't want to get tapped. And they're, it was just boring at one point because I was getting so much better. So then when I started to get that, I was just like, oh, I can't wait to go train with these guys, you know. So. I just need to get through the school day. That was the worst part. Right. Okay. And so it, you're saying that's what happened at AMA. You felt like you were kind of. I was like a big your... fish in a small pond at yeah, one yeah, point yeah. when I got it, started to get older and got better. You know. Who recommended Marcellus to you? I just knew I I was a jiu-jitsu oh, fan. Knew I knew Marcellus, and I went and I tried it out. And the first thing I was ro- rolling with like Ryan Hall was my partner and stuff that's like crazy. that. So like I I was like I, I think my mom brought me the first time and I was like I had to be here. And right. she got me a membership, and like ever since I was like, oh, I, yeah. And then so you you stayed at Marcelo's for and no. So then I w- that was when I was in high school. So when I graduated, then I moved to the city, and then that's why I trained at Marcelo's full time. You, you moved on your own? Yeah. Really? Well, actually, my stepdad at the time he uh, had a like a job or a construction job around there, so he uh, we got an apartment together. We stayed there. And, right, right. Yeah. But then uh, eventually I was yeah by myself. Yeah. And th- so I mean that. That's the commitment level you had is like you're ni- 18, 19 years old, you're living in the city on your own. Yeah, but I want to, to be like, I when I when I want it like for the worlds, I think I wrote like something like if I don't win the worlds, like I'd rather die. Like that's really? how, like I was, that's how competitive I am. Like you have to kill me like that. When I was so driven and I still am. And yeah. That's like one of those, that mentality again, I don't even know if, if you could teach it to somebody else and how you would like. Now, when you say something like that, I don't think you can. You I think, really can, man. And there's some like uh, the other day, someone was saying like, "Oh, I wish I started training when I was five or 10 I'm like, in my opinion, it's either you have it, or you don't. I don't care what age you start training. You would have started. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you had that drive. It's just like you either, you either have it, or you don't, and it's it's hard to say that, but it's the truth. I feel like it doesn't matter what age you start, but yeah, I don't know. When you want something and you, you want it bad enough, you'll you'll get it. You know. I feel like there has to be a point in time where you almost felt like you were cho- like you said you were the chosen one. You ch- yeah. you were chosen to be this great at jiu-jitsu so what else are you even going to think about doing exactly and i didn't really like anything else nothing's really fun to me so. right so yeah. like you might as well obsess and going back to back to back to back but you know what's weird too like a lot of the teachers don't understand like because they used to bring my mom in for me it's like yo he's not doing any work he's, he has to go to college doesn't he and i told my mom i'm not going to college I, i'll go live on the mats and like mop the mats every day i just want to be in the gym and she really she, yeah she supported me i'm lucky because like, a lot of parents wouldn't do that you know and yeah. like they used to like bring her in for meetings and be like you know what's he gonna do like you're not worried about him and this and that and I think they didn't understand because I, I'm not good at math or I'm not good at like science or some shit that I'm not obsessed with something else. You right, know? right, right. They just like, thought you like a I just didn't, I, I like to learn what I liked. You know what I mean? So like I would study jujitsu just because I don't want to fucking study your stupid math shit. Well, that's, again, you could look at yourself 
from outside vantage and say that, right? Like yeah. Dylan doesn't care about school, doesn't care about getting a job or, you know, he doesn't have passion for anything, yeah. but talk to you about jujitsu. And I don't think I've ever talked to anyone else that knows as much just about the sport in general. Yeah. Like I can ask you about anybody and you'll know about them to a T. Like you've yeah. done your homework, quote yeah. unquote, in this sport and you become so obsessive that if there was a, a grading scale, you'd have an A plus in this class. You know what I mean? And I want to, and I want to get see, into like old school teachers too. It's like, it's kind of weird. It's, it's, it, you never know how many people in this world that maybe their teachers told them like, don't be doing something and they could be great at something. Yeah. You know? I don't know. It's just weird. Just because someone doesn't have a passion for something that like, you know, maybe they have a passion for something else. And that's a whole different discussion about teachers and stuff like that. You know, you always get some good teachers that have your back. And, you know, they used to, like, let me kind of go, you know, chill a little bit or sleep in class because they know I was training and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's another discussion, I guess. I don't know. Who, who was that individual for you that kind of gave you – you mentioned somebody My before. wrestling coach was yeah. one of my teachers, and so he was very hard on me, you know, and which was I, – I needed that. And he was a lot harder than me uh, – harder on me than probably anybody in my life. Like, one time – yeah, I never told the story, but like I was the number one seed in, in wrestling, and I lost that last seat, and it was like the worst thing ever. And he took me outside and like ripped into me like no one would ever rip into someone. Like I was like, holy shit! And like yeah. it changed my life. But it, he was right; it's what I needed, you know. Mm -hmm. And the tough love sometimes I think now people are become so soft that they can't take the like the tough love. You know, you need you need tough you need people. You don't need yes men around you. You know, especially when you're younger. Yeah, you, know, you need someone that is gonna be a, like a role model for you, and someone that's gonna that cares about you so much that they're gonna fucking tell you what you need to hear. You know, so I definitely my wrestling coach uh, Jason Lodato and you know Justin Natural and like people that, like that actually like care and love you. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard to find people that actually want to see you do better than they did. You know, because there's a lot of people out there that don't accomplish their dreams and then they don't want you to do good because like they can't handle it because they couldn't do it you know yeah yeah so do you feel like that towards other people like do you like watching other people live out their dreams oh 100 yeah. percent. yeah like I, it's hard to find someone though that like i, I don't know because I, I feel like i've been around the gym so long that it's hard for me to like find someone that has that passion and i'll i'll buy into it and I, i'll push them and i'll you know co-sign them and this and that but like I, they have to prove to me that they actually care and they and they're gonna do this you know well that's i, I honestly i honest to god think if i said to you hey look bro i want to start training and i want to be the best yeah but i'm tough on you like even when even, you, even you don't train the, exactly. full time you know and i'm i'm like yeah. on your ass you know I, you're on my ass and for a guy that and like, even sometimes you're like i don't want to do this like sharana like I'm, I'm done i'm like no you're not lifting you're fucking training yeah you know? I, and you you stay on my ass to a point where like i do appreciate that sort yeah. of stuff and i'm not looking to be a world champion exactly, one day you know? i like being good at what i do but you do hold me accountable and People do love that. That like, yeah. that it, that tough love. Quote and unquote. even if you want to be a doctor, I'll still be on your ass and be like, "Oh, do this, do that." And yeah. Like I don't, I don't. It doesn't matter if it's martial arts or something else. Like, yeah, I love seeing people do great. That's fucking awesome. You know, yeah, like man. people think I'm a scumbag, but like, no, like obviously, I'd love to fucking see people do awesome. That's the and difference like, between and, like the, the person people get online versus who you actually are. Yeah, exactly. You know, and like even with Logan, like I'm happy he's doing great in WWE. Like I don't want him to fucking do a backflip and like break his neck. Yeah, no, right, like, of course not. Like he's, you know, he's, he's good at it. He's great at what he does. It's cool to see people do great things, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely. But it's just hard. You gotta, you gotta pick the right people. You do. Because there's, yeah, there's well, people that'll bring you down too. Ex that too. And I want to talk about that a little bit, but before yeah. we do that, let's just take a quick commercial break. Are we, are we ready to rock though? Oh yes, sir. You ready? And we are back with Dylan Danis. So I, like you said, I think we're getting pretty deep, yeah. which is different for people because people see you and rightfully so. Look, if I didn't know you, I would think the same thing. Yeah. That I saw this, this. I think every single person has ever met me. I think you said to me, you're like, you're way different in person, man. Yeah. And I was a little bit nicer when I said it, but like, <laughs> no, that, I, I want to I show yeah. people that there is a different side to you. Yeah, of course. Because anytime but, somebody asks yeah. me about you, I say the same thing. I was like, look, take him for who he is online yeah. as a human, as a person. He is one of the most loyal guys that I know. We've only yeah. known each other for what six months, yeah. and I knew if I needed you and I called you, you would be there for me, and then vice versa. Yeah, like of course, you, yeah. you that hold guy me. that fucking tried to fight me, you're about to knock his ass out. Yeah, I was like, like, All but right. like that's the thing. Like you, and the one time, yeah. and I'll even get into this. Like there was a point in time where I didn't really know you that well. It's like maybe two months in, yeah. and you were going on your your benders, right? Yeah. It was like a time where all you wanted to do was drink and party, and I knew that, and I was like, I can't. I can't live this life right now. And yeah, I had to almost ignore you. Yeah. And then he sees me out one day and he was like, yo, what are you doing today? I was like, ah, I'm keeping it low key. <laughs> and I was, I was planning on keeping it located, not want to go out. And I ended up like going to the bar and I was just like not drinking and he sees me out and it wasn't like I was afraid. Like he wasn't mad. He was genuinely like upset. And he was like, 
I thought you were one of the good ones. Like I don't have a lot of <laughs> I don't have a lot of friends in my life. I don't have a lot of loyal people that I can trust. And I thought you were one of them. And no, that, bring this <laughs> that broke my heart, but I was like, damn, you know what? Like you're like, let me buy you a drink. I was I like, was oh, like bro, you know what, man, I'm sorry. Like I I did. I I I you know, um, I showed him the wrong side of me. And from no, that moment would, on, no. I was like, I'm gonna be a good dude because he's a good dude to me and he kinda he he deserves that. So no, yeah, I was just yeah, but you're probably right not to go through what I was doing because I was in a bad space. So. Well, do you want to talk about that at all? No. Nah, you don't even bring it up. No, nah, I don't bring it up. That's I fine. haven't talked about that maybe one day, but yeah, that's fine. And the thing is, is like people think they know me and they try to say, oh, why you don't fight? Like, but you know, people have their own battles, but, right? You know, it is, I'm not going to cry and bitch about it. Like most of these people do, yeah. you know, you, you learn from your experiences, you man up and you fucking, you come back stronger. That's all it is. You know, for sure, man, you, you've been through a lot. Um, and the reality is, like you said, you, you reflect on your journey. You almost don't want to do it because you're still so young and you are yeah. still so young. Exactly. Like, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? Like you went and just, just to remind everybody, what has been the accolades? You won IBJJF. Yeah, yeah, the world. Right? You won And worlds. then I won Abu Dhabi. Oh, you did? Uh, Abu Dhabi and the Geese, sorry. So it's like, it, yeah, it would be similar. Pan Ams. Okay. Yeah, I won everything. When I, at Brown Belt, I was like the, I didn't lose for like two years. I beat everybody like, you know, and then at Black Belt, I kind of started doing transition to MMA, then I won the Pan Nogis and then stuff like that. Yeah, super fights. So. so you think that when you turned, when you got your black belt, did you feel your your goals shifted? Like now you want to be an MMA fighter and your focus was a little bit different? I think everything just kind of changed in my life, to be honest. But yeah, I don't know if I want to get into all that. Yeah, just, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, you know, just stuff gets to your head. Yeah. Girls. You know, things, Listen, bad bro, things. That's the reality. People, people don't realize like yeah. you become that dude you want to be, but yeah. now you don't realize what it comes with. Like, and also to being a nerdy jujitsu guy, and you know, and then jujitsu fame, and then to real fame is a little different. But you know, it is what it is. When know? did you get connected with Connor? Like, how how did that all happen? Because I'm assuming that's what you're talking about, right? Like, what the? Well, yeah, just yeah, all that stuff. But like, uh, I think we're just friends on Instagram. I think you follow me from just being watching jiu-jitsu or something and obviously i was a fucking huge fan of his and we were playing on training for a while we were going back and forth and then it just ended up happening and we just clicked as like people you know like as a, as friends and then it mm -hmm. just went from there you know and his passion for the game is similar to mine and i think you know he as they say real recognizes real so yeah. we just clicked you know and then after that which is all off to the races you know like we were just talking about fighting all day and he knew that like i was and ourselves like People think that I turned into a different person when I met him, but I was like that. I was I got suspended from Marcellus before I got kicked out of Marcellus because of trash talking and not trash talking or just being a little bit more cocky and like being myself. And he always tried to make me him, and uh, we had a lot of issues with that. But like I always been the same person, you know. You say Marcelo. Yeah, even before I met Connor, I'm saying I was the same person. But like I understood the game, you know. I was the first one to be ever talking like crap at jujitsu and making big matches like. Gordon, the only reason Gordon's around was because of me. I was the first one to do that. And where Gordon was a purple belt, like trying to talk shit back to me, me, Gary Tunnan. And I had some of the biggest matches in Jiu-Jitsu because of, I, I built it, you know? And then and the old school heads were like, what the hell's going on? This is like, you don't do this. I'm like, bro, I'm building a brand. Like, I'm building this. I'm building the sport that I love. And, uh, yeah. So What gave you the idea to even do that? To be honest, I just always had that in me. I just understood the... The spectacle. I think maybe I grew up on that, like on wrestling, on the Attitude Era, and just the, the build up. And I remember how fun it was when you used to watch Stone Cold and The Rock going at each other. And then yeah, I yeah. thought it was real. When I was a kid, I swear to God, I thought Stone Cold and The Rock so was real. Bro, I would just be like arguing with my friends, like who's gonna win, you know? And like I just loved the build up. And they would have like the two face off, like yeah, the two yeah, sit downs so cool. and shit like that. So I just kind of always got the game. And then when me and Connor got together, and like I just, I think he understood that I got the game. And like learning from him, I learned so much from him. Like it's it's crazy, and we just connected on a lot of levels from loving martial arts, from loving training, from loving the whole you know everything about fighting. So I think that's how we got so close, you know. So that I didn't realize that I thought that you were this jujitsu guy, and then Connor almost changed it. But you were you were doing this already on your own. Yeah, I was always kind of talking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Marcel used to really have me on like a like a leash almost. yeah like basically yeah and, and either you leave the gym or you, you stop and we used to have we used to go like into so many fights me and him like I, really? I can't say too much about him obviously he's sick right now too so i don't want to go too much into him but he also just praised gordon which was fucking bullshit like i don't know that that really rubbed me the wrong way yeah because gordon's not actually a good person you know so and everybody his his own brother trains at a different gym doesn't talk to him that should just show you that he's a bad person what's up with that 
I know all, I know the stories, but like I don't want to I don't know want to air their dirty laundry because the younger kid is actually a nice kid. Yeah, but like that's just shit that pissed me off about Marcel. Is like he knows me as a person. Right. I used to go to his house and help him watch his kids and play video games and hang out and do all this shit. And he knows how good of a person I am. And then to say and go praise Gordon for the shit that I was doing and say oh he's a great person like fucking bullshit man. How is it, the amount of people that call me for Marcel and then we're like. That is like ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's, it's insane. You know, like that's got a sting coming from somebody like you said. It, it is sting, man. Because someone that I looked at as a dad, right, right. Like he was like a dad figure to me, Marcel. You know, he, like he was he was there for me all the time. You know, like we basically did everything together. You know, and yeah, um, yeah, it, that one did sting. I can't lie. Yeah, it was, it was fucked up that he did that. Yeah, and, I remember it when. You were. I mean, that was like last month or so, right? Like yeah, really, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he, like you said, man, you you do have a gigantic heart and I don't think people realize that. So yeah. you get affected by things and they'll, they'll eat at you. You know, yeah. like when you don't have, or when you have like individuals that you can claim as like your role models yeah. and they're close to you and they kind of do you wrong or maybe they did something you didn't expect them to do. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah, and it and I don't think enough people, especially men admit that sort of stuff. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a hard thing to live with. Especially cause I don't get you, you're getting me too personal, bro. I don't want to get too much out, but yeah, yeah, especially yeah, when you have like people that you look up to as role models and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it definitely hurts when it comes from them. When it comes from anybody else, that's the thing too that people don't understand. Like all this shit talk that people say, they don't know me. When it comes from someone that actually knows me, a friend, that's when I take it and I I assess it. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, when yeah. some bullshit guy online is talking shit, that doesn't, doesn't affect matter. my life. You know, yeah. I have a very small circle, and you know that. Yeah. I have like very small. Like, so if it doesn't affect my circle, then I don't really, you know, put any mind to it. Yeah, yeah. That, like and that. I wonder if people would expect that out of you, that you do run very small. Yeah, I really do. I, like very small. Yeah, they probably expect that you have like a gang of people every time you go out and for like I mean, yeah, I mean, the thing is you got to you gotta separate the club friends or, or the, yeah. I would say the out friends besides your real friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a big difference. And uh, that's why I think when people meet me, they're like, oh, like, I really like this fucking dude. He's sick. But like, you got to... Yeah, you gotta you, you just gotta learn how to read people. I'm good at reading people. It's one of the reasons I'm good at MMA because I know how to read people. Like I'm reading Logan, seeing how I, I just I could just read him like a book. You know, I could just yeah. see I seen these kind of like athletes in my life. Like yeah, he's he's petrified. I I, I know I could just and it, it's a I forgot who said this quote, but it's like you know you you look at yourself to know others. Like I know I I just like I, don't know, I just read him really well. I think he's he's like shitting his jocks, man. I he, think that's why he's trying to get this fight pulled, you know? Oh, you think he's trying to get the fight pulled? I mean I know he is. So, oh yeah. But now I think he's he's two years back is like and he he signed yeah. up and then he he fucked up so I I don't know man. Uh, that's I just hope he shows up. I think he will. I mean like you said at this point He's a competitor. He's got he, the is same he competitive competitor? edge that you have with fighting. He's had his whole life with content creation. He wants to be the best. So there's no way he's going to pull out. What would be his reason? Uh, uh, he, from what they're saying, I'm going too hard on him online. I don't know. Right. But okay, if that's his reason, there's no way he's going to let that become the... I mean, that would be insane. I know, which is crazy. Well, let's hope not. I, I, I think for both of your sakes, I think it'd be a great fight to watch. People are looking forward to it. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. I know, I'm say, I built this whole fight up. I'm carrying this card on my back, bro. You're doing a job. And no, no one cares about Tommy Fury and KSI. Why are they, but yeah, why are they not promoting the fight? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm the only one doing it. So, like, even Logan, like, he's not promoting it well for someone that has such a big audience and this and that. And you knew that we were supposed to do SmackDown. I went to SmackDown. It was supposed to be this whole thing, and he didn't do it. So... I think he just maybe doesn't want to promote it because he he knows he's gonna lose. I don't know. I don't know, man. So that's, I see that. Well, listen, that that's you're, you're, the old the old not right say way. anything and then let the fight happen and then you know right right. So well, well like you said, I, you you have higher aspirations and and when you're talking to your kids one day, you're gonna say, hey, these are my accomplishments. It's gonna exactly. be more up. Uh, you, your end goals are to become yeah, a world, world champion, champion fighter. Yeah, right? yeah you want to exactly. be a, 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 you know, yeah, a exactly. UFC champ. Yeah. Let, talk me through and free fighting like boxing is. I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. really, I don't really consider boxing a, a superior martial art. You know, we've seen what happens when a jiu-jitsu guy fights a boxer. So we already know that we've seen the stories. It's a story and uh, older than time. You know, I yeah. mean, jiu-jitsu guy takes the boxer down in two seconds, and chokes him out. So yeah. like, it's not a superior martial art. Jiu-jitsu is the king. So if oh, you him, think jiu-jitsu is the king of martial arts, one hundred percent doesn't it beats every every style and in, in any fight. Yeah. You know, and Hoist Gracie proved that how many times. So. 
I mean, and for a guy that wrestled four years, done jiu-jitsu for four years, that's a fucking crazy athlete. He, just, uh, he wants to fight in the UFC. But he we, the Bellator money was bigger than the money that he's getting now for an MMA fight, and he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to sign this two-way contract. He didn't want to do this. When when they came to me with the contract, I didn't even complain about the way. I didn't complain about the testing. I didn't complain about nothing just because I wanted to fucking punch this dude in the face. You he know what I mean? Fight. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think, Which, like you said, you've been a part of a championship camp right with Conrad. Yeah, of course, yeah. Can can you talk us through his camp with Khabib? Like how 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 are the vibes just the entire time? Serious, yeah. That that camp that fight was a very serious fight, you know. It was he he's he's talked about it, you know, he he didn't do some of the right things that he should have been, but um it was very serious. Connor takes his camp like that's another thing. I think people think Connor th- doesn't take shit serious. He takes it very serious. Yeah. And he's very like he deals with a lot of stuff too that it's hard when you're the only one building the fight, you know? Like, yeah. he's the one that was carrying the promotion. He was the one making everything. So he he has to do a lot of stuff, man. That man, I could say, carries so much weight and doesn't never complains or never doesn't even show any emotion. Like, yeah. I don't know how he does it sometimes. Like, man, you're a fucking animal. Like, he, he it's is. crazy. He he just, just rocks on. He just keeps going and going. And I, I mean, you think about, like, the two... The two fights that stand out to me, obviously, are Khabib and, and Jose Aldo, right? Like, yeah. when, when he fought Jose... Look at that. Look, you see, he got into Jose's head, you know, and that's the same right. thing with me it's, doing the Logan. That's exactly you know? what I was thinking. And think about it... This is a fight game, though, so, yeah. like, why is Logan complaining about this shit, you know? He, he know what he signed up for. Like, Maybe he didn't think you were going to start posting nudes of his wife. Well, he isn't, he isn't, he should, have, should have been taking nudes. <laughs> he should have wiped up a thought. That's not my problem. Okay, well, um, yeah, that's that's. Not, that's <laughs> you not saw my quote. I said, like, you ever say I'm slut shame? I love sluts. You know that. Uh, I yeah, I do know that. Yeah, yeah, so like, yeah, fuck. Yeah. I'm just. I I didn't put any captions. <laughs> that's yeah. I mean, listen. Like you said, you're not saying any. You're not. You know the funny thing is about this chick too. I'd be going because she's from New York. I would just be going places now. So guys, like, yo, I banned her one night after catch her. I used to date her. I used to do this. I'm like, well, I'm fucking, why are you tell me this? And everyone's just like, I don't know. And like, I think if he didn't didn't like, I think if he didn't show so much emotion towards it, it wouldn't have made it so bad. You know what I mean? Like he, you, you probably could, wouldn't. Be, you probably find something else to talk about right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And there's so much to go. I, it's only been like three days since the fight's been announced. Yeah. No, you have a lot of ammo. I'm sure you could. You oh, yeah, I, got, I got tons. I'm waiting for him to come back with something. I'm, I feel like I'm beating up a dead body. I'm trying to think what he would even say about, I mean. I mean, there's a lot to say about me. Go ahead. Let's go. I'm an open book. I may, have to, me. I, may have to be, I may have to anonymous be like, hey, look. For yeah, I know. I was going like, to imagine you would be like, oh, you need some help? Or yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, that you would be terrible. You're getting you beat up bad, bro. Throw this out there, man. You got to fucking fight back, bro. Oh, fuck. man. Here's some ammo. No, that that's but I think that's this is coming again, from a dude that fucking filmed the dead body complaining that I'm fucking you know going too far, bro. Like what the fuck? An image, an image of the yeah. Suicide. That's but he. That's one of the first things I ever noticed. I didn't know him before that. For before he did that video, that and then that video. But I give him credit from that video. Oh how yeah, his comeback. I like, gave him, I gave him credit too. Yeah, he, I thought he did great too. Like, I, I, like I how do you that. how do you come back from something like that? Very tough. I very mean, hard. it's come. It, I mean, just come back and move like and no normal human no uh normal human would do that but here's the thing and you get it too like i get like going viral and i get that but get doing that up, that's you, a different kind of he he was young at the time you get caught up in 24 25 like that's not that young was it hell no it was like 10 years ago dude. no it wasn't oh, so 10 years ago he's 29 so he was yeah maybe yeah, but uh, all i'm saying is like you get caught up in like the minutia of things and like oh my god this is nuts and you probably don't realize the out like looking back he's probably like i can't believe i did that but yeah, again, he's, done so, he, he's done a lot of stuff though. Look at the thing he just did with his podcast coast, like saying you should find a therapist because you believe in Jesus and like going at his friends and stuff like that. That's fucked up, you know? And like telling oh, his uh, brother you're not going to be a world champion. Like, who the fuck are you to tell him that? You know? Like, imagine saying that to your own brother. No. Like, imagine your brother or my brother came up to me and was like, hey, man, I want to be the best in the world of this. I'm like, no, you're not. Like, fuck you, bro. You know, I'll never tell anybody they're not going to do anything because everybody told me I was never going to be here. Yeah. I'll tell you that. So yeah. anybody could do whatever the fuck they want. Trust me. That's a that's a good way to put it. And if you would it. imagine all the teachers and everybody that told my mom this and that, these kids aren't gonna do nothing. This kids aren't gonna do this. Now all them are trying. All the teachers want pictures of me and this and that. A, so like, I would never tell anybody that they can't do something. Never. Have you have you ever had a conversation with him in person? Like, do you know him? I I, I talked about the times I met him. Yeah. The, so like the, the, the last time I saved his life. How? I I, I didn't tell you this story. No. Yeah, so I actually he he would be dead right now. So he Logan Paul would be dead without Dylan Danis. You know about the story. Well, He's no. talked about it. Yeah, he, he he came to New York and didn't check in with me. <laughs> it went to a fucking party that I listen, I, I I'm very well connected in New York and 
uh, he has to be careful because some of the words that he says online, people don't understand that he's fucking around when he talks about me. Right. I have people that have like my back for real. Right. And he was about to get two in his head and I stopped it. And he's talked about it. He's Damn. talked. Yeah, oh, he's talked about it openly. So I saved his life. He thinks that he could just roam around the city talking shit about me. No. This is yeah. a dangerous place, bro. Huh? Men has a dangerous place. Yeah, especially when you're with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially well, when you're my enemy. Yeah, I so know. That's he, why you're on my good side. I saved his, I saved his life. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, look, I, I think it's, like you said, you're playing this as a game because that's what it is and you're having a lot of fun but with it. But the thing it. is, it, we have a fight sign now. So yeah. now this is different. This is, you know, mental warfare. This is the fight game, you know. This is different. Before, well, that's why I wanted to ask. So mental warfare, that box is checked. You're doing a great job there. Yeah. How is your training? I feel great. Yeah. The fuck is that? Oh, yeah, I feel great. I feel I feel I'm going to clean them. I, I, I do I do think I'm going to get a nice, beautiful KO. You yeah. Know? yeah, I really do. I I don't want to call the shot because I don't want him to be expecting it. But I do I do see a shot that I can clean him with. And I think I'm going to knock him unconscious. Now, you're watching you're watching tape from like KSI's fight. I actually never watched really any of his fights. I just yeah, you know, you're you're fighting you're fighting yourself in there, you know. So yeah. I don't really see him. I just see a fucking a blank canvas, you know. Right. Same thing with jujitsu or, or MMA. You know, you're fighting your yourself. So really, so when you when you competed, you never like studied up on so and so and said, "Hey, he it depends does on this, if you go he's like, oh, this guy has a signature move or something like that, or or some kind of like you know, he's really good at, it, I guess. But uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, I just kind of. You should be ready to be able to fight at any time. At any time. You know? And I always thought that, like, because if you run into a street fight, you don't know the guy's style. So right, right. You, you, gotta, style. you gotta be ready to go. Do you have any aspirations to compete Jiu Jitsu again? Yeah, 100%. You do? I think that me and Gordon would break every record in Jiu Jitsu history for numbers, for anything. So for the love of Jiu Jitsu, I think I have to do that match. You think he'd do it? Yeah, no, he will. Yeah, 100 We We talked about it. Yeah. And uh, I would do it for Jiu Jitsu. I wouldn't do it for him because I'm just giving him the free club. But. Yeah, I would do it for jiu-jitsu to make the sport bigger. That would be fucking crazy. I think it would, it would definitely, and the amount of purses that are being offered for this match over the years is like, no one's ever getting paid that jiu-jitsu ever again. So, How long of a camp would you want before that fight? That would have to be me going to like a, a pure jiu-jitsu school, training yeah. every day like how I used to. So hypothetically, you know? where, like where would you go right now? I don't know. I had to think about the gyms, maybe to like Galvao or, you know, in the city to Morello or somewhere like a, a pure Jiu Jitsu gym. Because yeah. even the first time we fought, I wasn't, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm going to bring him much too much, but he knows what I was going through that in that camp. And I, I really don't think he's that good, you know? Who? So, Gordon. I really? really? Yeah, I think he's terrible. I mean, he's the best right now. Yeah, because he's juice off his head and it just gets everybody tired. And really? I, I, I don't think he's that good, no. I think there's way better guys than him. I think he's really? terrible. Yeah. Like who? And right now competing still. Yeah. Probably not too many, but like I'm talking about like Huffa Mendez is one like that comes to my mind. Obviously Marcel was way better than him. Um and You're Leanne, saying pure jujitsu skill. Yeah, like he's okay. not he's not that good. He's very uncoordinated. Like he tried doing MMA and I heard the stories of him quitting. You really? know, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. When did he try to compete? He uh when Gary made the transition. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. No one ever gives me credit that too. I'm a fucking jiu jitsu guy. Like since I was 15, I'm taking a boxing match. Imagine those guys doing boxing or something like that. Any jiu jitsu guy. You gotta give yourself credit, man. Think about Khabib or, or Islam doing a boxing match. They get fucking sparks. So right, like, right. I'm Who, willing. To, I, I'm willing to do any martial art. So yeah, you, you just want to fight. Yeah, I've done wrestling. I've done Greco Roman. I've done freestyle wrestling. I've done jiu jitsu. Now I've done boxing. I've done MMA. Um, I, I, I'll, like, you know, it's kind of crazy. You know, and that's that's a journey that. One day I'm gonna be able to say like, yeah, I fucking did it all, you know. Yeah. Who who, training or competing has been like the hardest jiu jitsu competitor you, you've gone through? He, uh, Leandro, hundred percent. Him, competing against, he's uh, this. Yeah, I never felt anybody like that before. He was just so his reflexes were just so spot on, and his competitiveness is so. He's like me, you know. So it's hard. It's like too like it's like yeah. that, you know. He doesn't give up, you know. So um, he, obviously him, um. Yeah, he he comes to mind probably the, the most. But there's there's been tough. I mean, everybody's tough at that level, you right, know. Right. But like like training wise, Marcelo obviously is one of the best ever. Um, Hafa Mendez is a ri ridiculous. Right. Like, yeah, he's ridiculous. He's he's ridiculous. I wish he still competed. I don't know why he retired so young. But how old is he? He's probably twenty nine. He retired at like twenty eight, twenty seven. I think. Uh, I don't know. He might Recently. be in his thirties now. His brother is amazing, Guy Mendez. Yeah, yeah. I mean the Meows. Obviously, I train with one of my close friends. I fucking love those guys. Mm. They're great. And uh, there's so many guys out there. I'm probably missing a bunch of guys, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, there's so many really, really good guys out there. Good. So, Leandro, 
when he was here, he, um, you saw him as almost like that father role with you, right? He, he was always my idol. So when I was growing up, he was my the background on my phone. I was yeah. a brown belt, and like he was my idol in, in jujitsu. Like obviously besides Marcelo and stuff like that, uh, he was my favorite competitor. And then like when I got to go against them, it was like going against Michael Jordan for me, you know? Damn. Yeah, which is fucking awesome. And uh, yeah, then we end up becoming friends. And he kind of like he liked me, and you know, he he want one of the things he wanted me to come train with him for a long time, and like he he kind of like didn't like that whole shit talking thing either so he kind of had a little thing with that and then he got he got over it and then like recently he was here with last time he came to new york he stayed with me and oh then, really yeah and we were going out and like hanging out like when i was younger he used to be the crazy one now he was a little bit older and like you know he's like a little bit more tame he was like damn you're wild now yeah <laughs> um we yeah but we we used to train together too and we compete and he was he was a good good, good he, dude. He was one of those guys that, in not even knowing that much about jujitsu, just everybody liked him. Yeah, like he was, was a man. You you won't find anybody that's had a bad thing to say. He was a fucking man. Yeah, yeah. even like after he competed, he was so excited about competing. Yeah. Like just, you wanted to be around and watch him. His style too was just nonstop. It was just yeah. it was so fun to watch. You know, yeah. even the gi, like, he, yeah, he was awesome, man. It, it's yeah, it's fucking sad, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, it really is. It's like, crazy. I, I almost broke like I. That was one like one time in my life where I ever got a phone call and I like my heart just like fucking dropped to, like my stomach because you seem like I went through a bad time when I was going out and doing all this shit like that could have happened to me very easily it still can and like it's just so crazy it happened such a good person you know yeah it's, just, it's fucked up who called you uh, I think it was actually someone I tra- some some girl I trained jujitsu with she called me and I I was like what, what are you talking about and like, I couldn't believe it you know it was like yeah. one of those moments and then I was like holy shit like I thought it was fake I couldn't yeah. believe it. and then I. People are like such scumbags online. They're like sending me the videos and stuff. And it was just like, it was hard to deal with here. When was it? A year ago? Yeah, I think it's a year now. Yeah. So this is like the thick of how you were going through your shit. Yeah, then my, then my dad passed and like all that. So this is like all during the same time. So it was all pretty tough, you know? Wow. Yeah. Really? That's why a lot of people don't know about like before the KSI fight and all this shit I was going through. I don't like to talk about it because I, I feel like people that complain about their life, like there's so many other people that have way worse things going on, you know? Yeah. So I don't like to complain because I see, you know, average people. I go through a lot of bad things in their life and deal with it and, and come from adversity, you know? Yeah, but just because other people go through worse or the same doesn't mean you can't acknowledge that you've been through a lot. Yeah, I guess. I just feel like I'm, I'm in a very blessed position in my life that I shouldn't have the right to complain, you know? I, I've been to Brazil. I've been to these countries. You know, I'm half Honduran. I, I've seen the shit that people go through, like mm-hmm. the real shit that, you know, when they have no money or they're living on the streets, kids selling you know, like fucking candy for money and they have yeah. nothing. They have those the big bellies because they have like no food. And yeah, that's real problems. You know what I mean? So right. like I, for me to complain because I, I'm i going out and there's too many fucking girls and alcohol and shit. I mean, that's that's not real. That's not real life problems. Well, honestly, man, I, I think you're not giving yourself enough credit for what you've been through. Yeah. And you've been through a lot and you've been down. And to- you've seen how many people that I thought were my real friends and they, they yeah. left me, you know, so. 100%, bro. They, they left you at a time where maybe they thought it was worse for their life to be associated with you which is which is understandable too and i think you've acknowledged that right like you yeah. do a good job now with saying hey look like you just said it to me like maybe you're like you're right you shouldn't have been around me at yeah. that point point." and i think all that matters is when you but i just think that like if you really love someone and you see them going through a bad time you don't yeah, yeah. you don't just stop hanging you just out stop, yeah. right, right. you don't leave them you at least check in yeah or, or you you fucking grab them and you fucking kidnap them and you say i'm, I'm gonna make sure you're all right you yeah. know that's what i would do yeah, if I would, if I if I love someone, I saw them going through something. I would be in their house and be like, "I'm staying on your fucking couch, and we're gonna go train every day, and I'm gonna fucking make sure I'm here for you." You yeah. know what I mean? And just because people, you know, go through things doesn't mean they're a bad person. You know, and people that actually know you should know that. You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Now I don't know another real you, man. I think that's the good. That's the reason why I wanted to have this podcast kind of direct this direction because. Yeah. You again, your persona online versus who you are in person are, are two vastly different things. Yeah, do you but feel the, like I, I I don't feel like I'm I'm like a Kobe Covington or something like that though. I feel like those guys way. are fi- very fake. You like, think he's fake as far as not just as in like that's that's a persona, that's a character. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just I just turn up who I am. You know what I mean? Okay. Like okay. I feel like I am that person. Like you see me, like you know, like, I fuck with my friends. I like to talk a little shit here and there. Yeah. Like I. You know, I, I am who I am. I just turn it up when I, I'm fighting someone, you For know? Sure. I don't think I'm, I'm playing a character in any way. I think there's certain... I'm not like a WWE guy where it's like, hey, how you doing? And then it's like, hey, fuck you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just... I think I just turn up who I am. Well, you know you do? You, you turn up who you are for sure. And you don't show the side of like the dude you're saying right now. Yeah. It's like the loyal, 
loving and caring individual that maybe you could present online. Like you did it the one time with the dude that got bullied, the kid that got bullied. Yeah, yeah I like to take care of bullying. Yeah, like stuff like that. Like, I mean, look, man, that could be your new after you. Win well, this I actually, fight. I, t- I signed like a Netflix show. We're gonna do a pilot for it where I go around to gyms and find people either with disabilities or stuff like that and uh, help them train and like do like a little thing with You're them. You're starting a Netflix show? Yeah, we were showing the pilot and I told you. You didn't tell me shit, bro. What are you uh, talking about? When yeah. did you start this? So yeah, it's, we, they pitched it. We had the whole thing. So like what? we got like a whole thing behind it. Yeah, so like either if someone has a disability or any kind of, if they're getting bullied in the school, I'm going to come in and like we'll do jujitsu or I'll bring them to go eat and like talk to them about their life and like actually, so they have a friend or someone that's on a higher level that like has their back and like they'll go to school but like oh yeah like you know this motherfucker has my back what are you talking when is it starting yeah uh, we're, uh, we're not sure yet we're trying to find, figure out we're gonna do a pilot and then we're gonna pitch it to like oh that's stuff. awesome yeah, yeah, so oh, you like, cool. like your agent set it up and everything yeah it's all it's all like, dude well that's done. sick it's signed yeah I think that is like again you talk about purpose in life what you you say you diminish I think you diminish a lot of what you went through you went through what I would consider a serious amount of stuff that would break a lot of other people. I think so. And, and I think you handle it very well. And I think that's why this show, yeah. like for example, and I'll never mention names, but the guy at the gym that kind of went through something similar with you, yeah. you were able to resonate with and talk to him about that. That probably helped him out so much. You don't even realize yeah, it. I, I, that's I, the benefit of, of a show like that. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think, yeah, I don't know. I, it's hard for people to understand that there's obviously a human behind who I am, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't really care because, like, I don't need to prove myself to anybody. Yeah, yeah. I need to prove myself to you, like, to my friends and to yeah, my yeah. family. You know, that's the people that know me. Like, I, I'm, the, you know, not these fucking people online, right. you know? Fuck them, who cares? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but you're right, though. Maybe sometimes I do don't show that side of me, but yeah, I try man. to, you know? Let it let it out. But well, that, uh, again, hopefully people will listen to this podcast and they see you in a little bit of a I, Yeah, and I have, like, a very, like, sensitive spot for, like, people that get bullied or, like, people that have, like, uh, disabilities and stuff like that. Like, if I ever seen someone try to fuck with someone that has, like, Down syndrome, I would I'd yeah. probably go to jail. I don't like that either. I would well, go we, to jail. We, were, we were out there one time and, and somebody with disabilities came up to us and you handled it very well. I, yeah, like one time this guy was in a wheelchair and he wanted to come up to the table and I like forced them pick to like up. pick him up. <laughs> yeah, no, awesome. I swear to God, he had to put the wheelchair and he I let him party with us and everything. Yeah. Good for you, man. Like I get like really like crazy with that shit. Like if someone ever did something in front of me, I, I don't know how I'd react. Really? I'd probably go to jail. Well, I'm excited to watch that show, man, because you yeah. do have a side of you that I want everybody else to see. What are main, like you said, Logan Paul fight, incredible feat to even be doing something like yeah. this and it's going to be great what are your end goals what do you want your legacy to kind of be uh, mma world champion you know and yeah. and um yeah it's just uh, being the best and being the best version of myself i think at this point mm-hmm. i think getting older you start to learn that uh you know your legacy is who you are so right. uh, i mean as a person i'm growing so much with age and i just want yeah i just want to accomplish everything i set out for and not uh i think maybe not because I feel like regrets are so bad, but I have a lot of regrets, but I'm trying yeah. to right all my wrongs, you know? Mm. So, yeah, for sure. Just be the best version of myself and, you know, just keep doing what I do. I feel like I'm bringing a lot of entertainment to the sport. I feel like I know what I, I bring to the sport and I feel like I make it exciting. No matter if you love or hate me, like, at least you're talking about me, you know? That's a very good point, man. And I mean, the worst thing you could do is when no one talks about you. So yeah. that's like half the guys in the UFC. It's a boring life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They watch your fights the next day or they read on... ESPN. Right, right. But everybody wants to see me fight, either to get knocked out or to knock someone out. So it's very true. And it may take you a while to ro- right your wrongs because you have, you know, like you said, you, you have, you live. I wouldn't say you live with regrets. But I live a lot of cra- crazy life. I mean, like you a lot did. of people haven't gone out with me or seen like my life. I live a very like crazy life, and like even you've seen like some seen cra- crazy <laughs> stuff that have like you know, a lot of people wouldn't even believe to be honest. Yeah, no, this guy's this and, guy's and, pretty nutty. And, and yeah, and even just like the like the people around me and like the stuff that comes around me, it's just. You know, well, yeah. look, man, I will say, and I'm proud of you for making the transition from went through what you went through. You were at a low of a low. You're doing so much better now. Mentally. Just imagine like people don't, like the, the injuries I went through. People don't come back from. Right. One. Yeah. Like one. I went through two in the same year. Yeah. They told me it was in being in two major car accidents. Like no one comes back from that. So and I obviously like coming from a guy that was at the top. At what he does, and then all of a sudden he's injured, and then everybody's saying, oh, "What the fuck is this guy not fighting? He's, he's, you know, making fun of me, doing this and that." Like I'm a competitive person. Yeah, I think I don't want to fucking show people up. I was fucking like I couldn't move. I had a, like a knee brace on. I was in crutches like for almost two years. Like you know, so I, like there was nothing to do besides get into trouble <laughs> and do stupid shit. So you think that sparked your 
my yeah cores man yeah. i went through a fucking deep like hole yeah. like with that injury you know like i never went through something like that before where you can't walk you you can't wipe your own ass you're taking a shit on the side of the bed because you, you can't like get up yeah, yeah. and like two like the first one failed like how, how does that even happen uh, the best like sur- one of the best surgeons in the whole like city like mm-hmm. hss you know so it's just crazy how life works and like i never expected that and then i went to like a there was nothing to do. I couldn't train. Like training is like my my zen, my mental space. And when you don't have that, you looked for other things. And I started, you know, I went through a crazy you, time. So that's actually funny. You acknowledge the fact that jujitsu was your zen. Like that was of course. Your, that's what I you, love. And when you don't have what you love, is like, what do you? You know, obviously you're gonna steer down a wrong path. Do you find your zen in anything else right now, or is it still just training? It's training, uh, being like people I love. I think maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, just, I don't know. Yeah. Just doing the right thing and trying to, one thing I'm trying to learn now is trying to like embrace the moment and stay like present in the moment and not just like living in this craziness. Cause you can get lost in it. You Me know? too, man. It's like, that's the hardest part is like when you it's obsess like yourself with one thing, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like so much going on. You forget to just enjoy even doing something like this, like yeah. nothing else in this moment matters except for having this conversation yeah. and that in itself, like we could both have knees that don't work and in this moment it doesn't really matter yeah, exactly but a couple of years ago that would have debilitated you yeah you just and never know what life. happens in life in your yeah, game, man. it's crazy it's a, it's a wild journey and just gotta, i guess you gotta appreciate it like i don't know without the rain there's no there's no sun right so you I, gotta appreciate both sides of it i hear that man. and I, and now when i look back i try to like appreciate everything that's ever happened to me because it made me tougher made me you know and i, I shouldn't have let everybody get to me when i was down down in the dumpsters and i was like fuck i want to compete i can't train yeah like, i was just getting i was just so angry you know i was just like fuck i want to like prove everybody wrong because i knew i was better than everybody i knew what i could do i knew i could beat this guy i know i could beat that guy yeah. but like i'm just sitting there talking and then when i'm hurt and i i just i was so fucking competitive yeah. you know it's like imagine just like not being able to do what you know what you could do yeah. that was the hardest part about all this it's like, well that, that fire is the reason why you're so good yeah exactly you know, like, and, and then, you. then 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 you're hurt then you're sitting like this in a bed yeah, yeah and yeah. you're just like fuck i'm so fucking competitive and like i, I want to like get out there you know and it, it was it, it was tough you know well thank god you're able to keep competing man yeah exactly yeah that's that saved your life so every every podcast we do we wrap up with i asked the guests two questions yeah i'm gonna ask you what has been in your life it doesn't matter if it's jiu-jitsu family the lowest of lows you've ever experienced, like if it's an individual moment, and then let's follow it up with the highest of your highs you've ever felt. That's tough. That's a tough question. I know. That's why I asked it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say like not exact moment, the lowest of lows, but maybe just, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a deep one. Well, I think we sort of already talked about it, like the knee surgery. Well, that the, is yeah. just, I think just not doing the right things or I would say like maybe not I don't know, not proving to yourself what you can do mm. like, I don't know you know what I mean like knowing yeah. what you could do inside and then not being able to prove it or mm-hmm. not being able to I don't know just that, that, that that's really one of my biggest regrets but I still have so much time to show everybody what I'm saying is true you know so yeah. that's the only great thing about this is that I was, I'm was i still young so um, that I guess like not not showing the world what you could do when you have that. I feel like I was blessed with this talent. And I won't mean I worked hard for it. I worked my whole life for this. So, yeah, uh, yeah maybe that that's probably the lowest. And my biggest regrets is not, well, I was hurt. But, you know, I, I just can't wait to show everybody and shut everybody up, to be honest. Yeah. You know, I can't wait for that. I feel like it's going to be fucking awesome. What so, about the highs of your highs? Anything, like, come to mind where you're just on top of the world? Uh, yeah, you know, winning the stuff when I was young, you know, like, and jiu-jitsu because coming from where I, where I came from in Jersey, like being guys that have been training in Brazil their whole life at the best gyms, that that, that was cool. Yeah. You know, um, definitely beating guys that I used to watch and beating guys that like been training before I was even, they had their like black belts before I was even born. Yeah. You know, so like that, that shit was cool. Like, you know, I used to love just beating guys that, you know, thought they could beat me, I guess. And yeah. I think I'm going to have a lot more higher moments. We'll see. So. Well, yeah, and look, man, I, I had a great time today. I think the audience and myself, we saw a different side. I think we talked a different about it. Yeah, we saw a different side of Dylan Danis that I knew was in there and I yeah. wanted to get it out. I'm excited to watch your journey. You know, yeah. I've known you for, like I said, about eight months now, yeah. and the future is so bright for you. I appreciate it. And there's so much more to come. So, again, yeah. thank you for coming on. That's all I want to say for today, guys. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Dylan, anything for else sure. you want to say? We're ready for October 14th. October 14th. That's it. Cheers, yeah. everybody.